This video is going to take your Marwin spear build from this all the way to this. And one shot. <laughs> and one shot. <laughs> one shot. See, you wish you could catch me. You wish you could catch me, but you can't. I am invincible. And we're going to accomplish that today by breaking down the spear skill, showing you some examples of optimal character builds, and teaching you where to find some of the best spear-focused items in the game. So let's get into it. What's my name, Job? As always, what an incredible question. And I got to tell you, since we are going with a spearman, a spear fighter, pikeman, I, I don't really know what the official term for this is, but a spear focused warrior. Well, we obviously have to look back to the spear warriors of ancient times, who are the only ones who are, I really know who use spears, which would have to be the Greeks or the Romans. So, you know, like Achilles and all those cool guys. So we're going to go with a chill ease because we like to keep it, you know, nice and chill and friendly here at Coffee Nut Gaming. You know, just in case your uh, your mom or, or boss wanted to get into Marwind. I don't know. I think I'm just a chill guy. So I'm going to click OK and then let's get into this build. So before we get to breaking down our race selections for the optimal spear builds, I do just want to mention a couple things about the spear skill itself. The first is that spear is amazing if you want to be a nimble on the back foot fighter because due to its long reach and the way that speed scaling works in Morrowind, it is possible to melee attack an enemy without them ever having a chance to hit you. Second, I want to point out that the spear skill is technically governed by the endurance skill. So as we level our spear skill, our endurance will go up and not our strength. However, our spear damage that we actually deal when we do land an attack is scaled along with our strength skill. So let's keep that in mind because spear is the only case of melee weapons that levels endurance but still scales off of strength, which just makes it a little bit unique and something we should keep in mind as we're creating this character. So with that in mind, let's now go into our race selection here. So the first class that I want to mention and the first play style I do want to talk through is going to be our Argonian Spearman. Argonians are one of only two races in the game that actually get a boost to the spear skill innately, which we can see here in the skill bonuses. They also get boosts to uh, alchemy of five, athletics of 15, which again is the highest skill bonus that we can get from our race selection. And having athletics boosted by 15 is going to pair very, very well with the spear kind of play style. Additionally, we get an illusion bonus of five, medium armor of five, mysticism of five, and unarmor of five. Now, all of the skills here that are listed on the Argonian match perfectly with that nimble, evasive spear fighter that makes spear so unique in Morrowind. Having a boost to illusion and maybe specking into this slightly gives you access to enablers like Paralyze or Silence, which are going to help your squishier characters live longer and make the fights their own. Having medium armor, of course, very important when you're playing a speed-focused character because heavy armor is going to just be way too much of a burden and slow us down when we're really trying to stay on our back foot, backpedaling and thrusting at our enemies. And of course, mysticism opens up the door to those absorb skills, which are so good in Morrowind because they actually cannot be reflected back onto the player. So absorb health, amazing thing to have on a squishier character. Now with skill bonuses out of the way, let's take a look down here at our specials and you'll see the Argonian gets a resist disease of 75% and I've said this in every how-to video I've ever made, this is just not very exciting. Cure common disease potions are super common in the game. Do not take this into consideration when you're trying to pick a race. Common diseases are just really a non-issue. After that, we have a 100% immunity to poison, which is actually Kind of awesome to have, as I'm sure every Marwind player has been killed rolling the dice on a chest in a dungeon and, you know, getting poisoned for like two minutes or something and waking up dead uh, after trying to rest it off. And then finally here, we get water breathing of 120 seconds on self, which doesn't really play into being a spear fighter particularly, but is just a nice little bonus to have. Now, what you can't see here on the menu when selecting an Argonian that lends them towards being that amazing evasive spear fighter is that they start with a speed of 50 
and an agility of 50, which lends them perfectly towards that evasive skill style. So even though the Argoning will start with a much lower health pool than the second race that we're going to discuss, because we'll innately be boosting up our endurance on those level ups, getting those higher plus five attribute modifiers by constantly using our spear skill, it's actually not going to be that big of an issue and should largely be rectified by the time we enter into the late game. So if you're going for that nimble, athletic, scrappy fighter, and you don't really care about not being able to use boots because, again, Argonians are a beast race, then I think this is the best race to start off for that more evasive spear fighter. Now, if you're looking for something more traditional, more warrior focused, uh, more tank focused, then there is another great option for a spear wielder. And that is going to be our Nord here. So now let's take a look at our Nord skill bonuses. First, we get a plus 10 to axe, plus 10 to blunt weapon. We get a plus five to our heavy armor if you do want to go that route and aren't so concerned about, uh, you know, the evasiveness that innately lends itself to the spear fighting style. We also get a boost of five to our long blade, 10 to medium armor, which I think is the best armor type for this build. And then of course, a plus five bonus to spear. So if you're going for that more warrior who just happens to use a spear fighter, the Nord is going to be your best bet with that plus 10 to the medium armor and that innate plus five to the spear. Also, what you don't see here is that Nord start with a 50 in both strength and endurance. And again, those are going to be the two most important stats that we're considering when we are creating a spear focused warrior. Additionally, let's take a look here at the specials. First, we have an immunity to frost, which is just awesome to have. It completely cuts off damage from one of the four elements that do exist in the game. We also have a 50% resistance to shock. Again, kind of uh, eliminating our, our worries with another of the four main elements. We have Woad, which is a shield 30 points for 60 seconds on self, just gonna help tank us up a little bit in the fights when we do come across that melee kind of character that we you know, can't backpedal from because now we're wearing heavy armor and are a tank-focused spearman. And finally, we have Thunder Fist, which is going to be frost damage, 25 points for one second on touch, which is just going to be a great additional damage source here in the early game. So all that being said, I am, for the purpose of this video, going to go for that more nimble, evasive play style and pick the Argonian, because that to me is the, the essence of what the Spear and Morrowind is meant for, keeping people at arm's reach, backpedaling, and just being an overall nuisance and having a ton of fun doing it. <laughs> Now that we've selected our race, the second most important step is, of course, going to be creating a custom class. So pick a witty, super cool name that everybody's going to love, and then go and pick your specialization as combat. Because as you can see here, whenever we select our specialization, all the skills below it will get a nice plus five bonus. And of course, you can see Spear is here in the list. Now, after we've selected our specialization as combat, we'll want to move down here to our favorite attributes. And because I'm going that more nimble, evasive Spearman build, I will actually leave them here as strength and agility. Friendly reminder, picking your attributes does grant a plus 10 bonus to this particular attribute, and having high strength will allow us to deal more damage, which is very important when you don't have a lot of health. You want to, of course, make sure the hits that you land and the time you have are very effective. And then below that, selecting agility is our second favorite attribute. Agility will boost our chance to hit, as well as our chance to dodge and our maximum fatigue all of which will be very important when we're trying to run circles around the you know massive orc totally armored out who's slowly trudging along trying to chop us in half with his axe. Now, if you're going that more tank focused build, I would recommend you go strength and endurance here just to maximize that health pool, make sure we're getting as much health as we can at each level up along the way in the early game. Just become that you know monolith of strength and heavy armor that cannot be cracked by any mere mortals, you know, only Vivek and, and people like that. Now over to our major skills for the more evasive style class. I am of course going to take spear number one. Now what taking something as a major skill is going to do is set that skill to 30 points prior to any bonuses. So this is going to give us the highest spear skill that we can right out the gate when we pair that with, you know, our racial bonus from being an Argonian as well as our specialization as combat. 
After taking Spear and keeping in mind that I want to be a plucky, annoying, evasive combatant, I am going to take Acrobatics and as well, Athletics. And now taking Acrobatics actually has two purposes here. Remember what I said at the start of the video where Spear is actually governed by our Endurance. So by using our Spear, we're increasing the attribute bonuses that we get at the level up screen for Endurance and not for Strength, but our damage scales from Strength. So we do still want to have some major and minor skills that are strength related so that we can make sure we get good boosts to our attributes as you know we use them to actually get the level ups. So taking acrobatics here again, dual purpose. It makes us more evasive as we level it up. We can jump higher, all that good stuff, but it also will allow us to get those better strength boosts and keep our damage scaling as we continue in the game. Now, fourth here, I'm going to take medium armor, my most favored armor type for this particular style of build. And then in the last slot, this is where we get into the more flexible parts of the build and where you should really make this class your own. If you don't want to go into a hybrid spellcaster style, uh, this is a great slot for something like sneak or marksman to play into that more evasive character type. But if you're like me and want to play a more hybrid caster role, because magic is so fun and Morrowind, this is a great slot for illusion for those enabling spells, chameleon, invisibility, paralyze, or for something like destruction, just to make you that ultimate glass cannon, seven health, but it doesn't matter because you do a million damage kind of character, <laughs> which is also really fun to play. So here I'm going to take illusion. And then as always, moving on to the minor skills, I'll, I'll set it up as if I was going to play this character for a full playthrough, but again, make each of these characters your own. So my picks here are, are certainly not rule of law and go and, and create the awesome role-playing character that you've always wanted to have. But that being said, for minor skills, I will take Marksman here as an awesome alternate weapon and a great way to continue leveling up our agility. I'll take Alteration for access to things like Levitate and Open, Jump, all those cool awesome abilities. In the third slot, I'll take Alchemy, you know, just to leverage that boost that we do get from being an Argonian. Mercantile, because everybody loves money, and finally Enchant, because it is just such incredible late game insurance and a great way to just take up your time uh, once you start creeping in on those higher end game levels. Now with our custom class out of the way, let's move on and pick our birth sign, of which there are two standouts here for our Spearmen characters. The first of which, if you're going the more tanky route, is going to be the Lady. So you can see here under the abilities, we have the Lady's Favor, which fortifies our personality by 25 points. That's not going to have a massive impact on your game, but it will, you know, get you better prices, make it easier to convince people in quests and stuff. So it is just a nice kind of quality of life boost, doesn't really affect the spear build specifically. But the second ability here, the Lady's Grace, fortifying attribute endurance by 25 points is going to be an incredible boon for that more tank focused player. So if you followed the build like we did at the beginning, again, selecting the Nord, taking uh, endurance as a favored attribute, and also then taking the lady as a birth sign, you will exit character creation with an endurance of 85 points, which is the highest number that we can get from any combination of birth signs, favorite attributes, and race. So it will just set you up to be, again, that rock, you know, massive warrior freaking pecs of steel that cannot be melted. <laughs> Anyways, the, the lady going to be incredible for that more tank focused player. Now, this is also a great choice for the non tank focused player as well, because again, if you went Argonian, you're going to have that low endurance of 30 points maybe not didn't take it as a favorite attribute. Well, taking this, getting a 25 point boost is going to help round out that rough edge of the low health pool that you are going to start with. But if you're the kind of player like me, you're all on the offensive. You don't care about your health. You wanna just stick them with the pointy end and hope they die quicker than you. Well, then the second recommendation that I can make for a birth sign is going to be the lover. Now, under the abilities, we can see Mooncalf, Fortify Attribute Agility for 25 points. Agility pairs wonderfully with that more evasive Spearman style, increases our chance to hit, makes it easier for us to judge, and gives us a bigger fatigue pool, which will help us run around and keep repositioning and stay out of melee range. 
And under the powers, you can see we get access to the Lover's Kiss, which is a paralyze for 60 seconds on target with a somewhat annoying drawback of damage fatigue 200 points for one second on self. But the way I look at this is not an insurance to start a fight, but instead a bailout save yourself tactic because you have a health pool of, you know, 30 points. You're at two and now you need to get away and chug some health potions. So if you're going for that more glass cannon play style, the lover is a very fun, fantastic choice. And because I'm going for that more nimble character type, I am going to take the lover here and then we'll move into the arguably more exciting part of the video and start gearing up for the adventures ahead. So let's take a peep here at the stats. Achilles, the spear person, Argonian, born under the sign of the lover. We have a health of 40, a strength of 50, an agility of 85. So we are gonna land every hit with these spears, a spear of 40, and an athletics of 50 as some of those major highlights here. Now, let's get underway and go get some equipment. All right, as always, let's start our how-to video by stealing the old limeware platter here, throwing it back into our inventory, and then taking the food right off the old man's plate. You know, we're pretty evil for doing this. Like, Secusius, he's just looking forward to having a nice dinner, getting off work early, right? He's been looking forward to it all day, and then he's going to walk in here. Everything's gone. I mean, this guy, he really drew the short end of the stick, didn't he? Now he doesn't have his nicest dinnerware, and he doesn't have a meal to eat afterwards. Pretty brutal. Ah, such is life in Morrowind. Some things are just tradition at this point. Sorry, Secusius, but... Uh, you know, you should have done a little more research before you accepted the prisoner that you were onboarding to the island here. Sorry, but let's go ahead, give the short, ring so to Fargoth so that we can get better prices when we sell all of our home goods here to RLA. And then we'll be taking the money that we make from selling here and we'll be heading over to the town of Balmora. Once we are in Balmora, we want to make a beeline to revere the trader as actually Revere has one of the best starting items that we can get for a spear player. So let's pop in here, speak to the old Khajiit. Whoa, look at those ears. He's got a couple tufts going on. Very impressive. But let's click barter here, and then we'll hover down to the middle of the screen and see the Devil Spear. Value 165, cast when used, lightning shield 1 to 10 points for 10 seconds on self, as well as a bound spear for 60 seconds on self. As you can see here, even at level 1, we're only paying 185 gold, which is just phenomenal, because what this is going to do is give us a repeatable spear here with the same exact stats as a Daedric Spear. So right at level 1, you have a spear that you can just summon on repeat. They don't have to worry about your Magicka, don't have to worry about your conjuration ability, your intelligence, willpower, none of that spell casting stuff. Just left click your mouse and you have an item that does 6 to 40 thrusting damage at level 1, which is just absolutely insane. Again, same stats as an end game Daedric Spear. And on top of it, let's open our menu here and you'll see that while we have the bound spear out, it also boosts our spear skill by an additional 10 points, making us more effective at hitting our own target. But with our starting weapon out of the way, let's make our way to the Guild of Mages. Let's go ahead and head downstairs and let's begin to worry about that armor. Again, we took medium armor as a major skill, so we need to find a good set nice and early that will keep us safe on our travels. And we can do that by heading here to Caldera. And then once we are on the main street of Caldera, let's go ahead and make a beeline to the old Gorak Manor and, you know, not see the creeper quite yet. We'll do that later on once our adventure is really kicked off and we got some drugs and other contraband to sell him. But for now, look past the creeper, head up the stairs, and then to the right of Duma Grolag, you can open this crate in the back, and there you have it. An Orcish Curus, value 2800, Orcish Greaves 1760, Pauldrons 960, and with almost no work at all, you have a nearly complete set of pretty much end game medium armor. So let's go ahead and throw these on. So there we are looking good for about three minutes off the boat, I must say. Uh, one thing I will add here though, 
Um, in the how-to videos, I like to keep these baseline. No mods, no additional plugins, none of that fancy stuff. But what I will recommend is that if you do have the GOG Game of the Year Edition or you've installed the Adamantium Armor plugins, you can get Adamantium Armor very, very early from Meldor in Balmora, which is just about the best medium armor that you can get in the game without going to Blood Moon or without doing some additional quests. So it's an incredible set to start with and pairs very, very nicely with the most enchantable helmet in the game, the Helm of Tohan, which I do have a separate video on that I'll link over here if you're interested. And this all pairs very nicely with being an Argonian because the helm is an open face helm, so beast races can wear it. But with all that armor mumbo jumbo out of the way, let's go ahead, let's travel back to the town of Balmora. And then once we're here, let's make our way to the local Silt Strider. You know, knowledge really is power in Morrowind. I mean, look at this. We're already off to an insane start. 85 agility right at the beginning of the game. We have an almost full set of orcish armor, which is pretty dang close to end game for the medium armor tree. But this is a coffee nut video, right? We got to aim for the stratosphere on these. So let's get an actual end game weapon and a marquee artifact that I love to book into these how-to videos with. So let's speak to Selville and let's sort out that weapon first. So let's hit travel and then head to the city of sin and debauchery, sir, in here. And once we've arrived, let's ignore the bright lights and smooth saxophone of downtown Surin and let's head off into the hills to the north of town. And this location that we're going to is actually quite close. So let's uh, just tip a hat to the developers here for making this one nice and easy for us. Now, right as we kind of crest this hill here to the north of Surin, you will see a Daedric Ruin coming into view. So let me get my Devil Spear on so that we can make our way closer here. Summon it up and boom, look at that. Case in point, OP level one already, one-shotting the Alex that is trying to keep us from this Daedric Shrine. But let's keep making our way around. Oh, hold on. Getting a little low in fatigue, so I'm gonna walk for just a second as we do have another combatant coming here. One shot. And let's take this guy out. Try not to chop. Boom! And just like that, I mean, it's easy as cake. This build is already it's just incredible. Spear is just so good early, I must say. But let's ignore the dead bodies, and you'll see here that we have arrived at Baal Ur Shrine. And although it's quite easy to get to, I will flash us here on the map just so that you can get an idea of where we are. There's Surin to the south. And now let's dive in. Now, the enemies in here are quite difficult. But thanks to our high agility, let's grab a quick save just in case anything goes crazy. We can actually just hop down. Ooh, there we go. Lived through it. And then let's find the door. Let's hop right over here. And we should be fast enough to outrun pretty much all the enemies in here, which what we are going to want to do. Because as you will see, there are some high level enemies down here. But we just don't have to be concerned with them. We are speedy boys and is, this should be quite easy to juggle past. So let's uh, draw this stray more out over here. Look at him, oh, he has a Daedric Spear. That's kind of nice, woo. Oh, it could be worth fighting, but we're gonna stick to the script. Bone Lord, do a little dodging here. Golden Saint, doesn't even matter. Look how evasive we are, holy crap. This is the joys of playing an Argonian, folks. So just keep running uh, here. We are officially in no-hit territory. Grab the glass halberd and helm off the table. And then while we're here, before we make our way out, let's check the stats on this. And you'll see we've grabbed the glass halberd. Chop one to six, slash one to six. Classic spear weapon, chop and slash are horrible. You're just gonna wanna stick to thrusting because thrust is five to 38 with a weight, and this is important, of 8.4 pounds and a value of 16,000. So there is a Daedric Spear that you can get in a similar manner to this 
very early in the game. It's actually at a Dwimmer Ruin, and I'll put the name up right here if you are interested in going to find it. But for this particular build, again, our nimble, evasive, light warrior, I do prefer to take the Glass Halberd and enchant it because the weight is 8.4 pounds and the Daedric Spear, which is 42 pounds, so 34 pounds heavier, that's a lot of loot that we have to sacrifice to carry that puppy for only a two point increase to the thrusting damage. So the Daedric Spear gets a six to 40 thrust and the Glass Halberd has a thrust attack of five to 38, but for that 34 pound premium that we get on the weight. So let's attach this up and then again, oh God, we're getting a little close. Let's, let's go ahead and make our escape. <laughs> See, that's what Daedric Armor does to you. It makes you slow, makes you drag. We're better than that. We are a nimble Argonian Spearman, and we don't give a damn about any of this stuff. So let's head back topside, head back to Surin, and then we will make our way to the next destination. All right, so now that we have swam our way back to Surin, which is going to be the easiest way to make it back from Bal Ur, just heading to the side, hopping in the river, swimming right back up instead of having to summit that mountain again, we are going to want to head back into the town and then catch a Silt Strider out to Balmora for that incredible artifact that we are going to bookend this video with. Like so, Falsy, let's head to Balmora. All right, once we've returned to Balmora, we need to make our way to the local Mages Guild, continuing our globetrotting expedition. And then once we are in the bottom here, let's speak to the old guild guide and make our way to the town of Sadrath Mora. Now, once we've left Wolverine Hall, we need to head into the city proper and find the local boatman here in Sandrith Mora. And once we've done that, let's go ahead and travel to Tel Mora. And from Tel Mora, the final destination, which is going to be Tel Arun. All right, now that we have arrived in Tel Arun, our final destination, like I mentioned on our fast travel string, let me pull up the map here as we need to make our way to this little cove that's kind of directly west and slightly north again of Tel Arun. So let's go ahead and start making our way over there, trying to stick to the islands where possible to avoid the slaughterfish infestation that we all know and are so familiar with. <laughs> Speak of the devil, it's, it's instant. God, it's instantaneous as soon as you hit the water. Bethesda, what were you thinking? All right, when you did that, what were you freaking thinking? People on all the Morrowind subreddits, forums, communities, everybody complains and memes on the cliff racers, but I think the real problem is the slaughterfish. Like, at least the cliff racers, you can see them coming. These guys, they come out of nowhere. And they come in swarms. What? What is this? All right, I have just made landfall, and you can see dead ahead is the cave of Namu, our final destination for this how to spear video. Now, one thing I will say before we dive into this dungeon is there are some pretty tough enemies inside. So be sure to take a quick save so you don't have to redo that journey, suffer through the swarms of slaughterfish again, and can take a couple cracks at getting this awesome artifact here. So I'm gonna do that, quick save, and then now let's dive into Namu. All right, first enemy. Let's get some good thrusts off here. Decent damage. Remember to thrust, remember to thrust. All the damage from the spear is from the stab. Oh, I think I hear another person behind us. All right, one down. I think we've only taken two hits from these folks. All right, let's, uh, again, let's, let's use the long part of the corridor here, staying on the back foot. If we can juggle this correctly, we should not be at risk of getting hit from this player here. As you can see, they're swinging. There is nothing they could do if we move right. And there we have it. Boom. <laughs> I think we got hit three times total in that fight. So there it is. That is the use case for the spear taken down. Enemies that are definitely of a higher level than us here at level one. All right, let's add some of this gold to our inventory. I'm going to step back outside, grab another heal. Let's go back in, pop a save. And then what we're going to want to do is head right down this main tunnel here. And, ooh, a spellcaster. Okay. 
Ooh. All right, there's the low health pool coming into play. That's that that's a problem for any level one character, but we can find a way around this with this build. Don't worry. Let's uh, let's just reload here. All right. So what we can try here first? Let's lead with the lover's kiss. We may be able to get it on him if he doesn't resist. Oh, he canceled our spell in midair. Ooh, there's some destruction magic coming out. Let's back up. Again, we want to use this place to our advantage. Use the terrain. Oh, there he is. He pulled out his sword. And it, oh, it's over now. Didn't you know that we are immune to those attacks? Come on. We just need one stagger. Keep him at arm's length. And <laughs> you should have kept your spells out, buddy. What are you doing? Does he even have any good loot on him? Quality potion of shadow. Okay, that could be nice. Some gold. Lock picks. Nothing too exciting. But uh, that again, that's not who we're here hunting. In fact, they reside in the room just beyond. So let's grab another quick save. Then let's enter the final room here. You can see there is where our quarry and the artifact lies. So let's not run. Let's conserve our fatigue as we head up the stairs here, as we will need those first couple staggers to make sure that we can survive with this low health pool. And we, of course, we want to stay mobile, be able to run during this fight. So there he is. Okay, the fight's already started. I don't see any destruction magic yet. We are not running. We have full fatigue. All right, let's start backpedaling here. Oh, God, he's landed a couple hits. We've landed one of our own. Great damage. Great damage. Come on. One more hit. And there you have it. Boom. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> This guy's level 16 who holds this loot. So 15 levels over than us. We took him out in four hits, and that is going to just show you the strength of this build. Now, let's loot Galamus Drin here, and you will see the artifact that we have been searching for, which is the Ring of the Wind. Value 8,000 with a constant effect, fortify attribute, 30 points, which, when equipped, will make our hit chance increase our chance to dodge increase as well as boost our maximum fatigue. So this is just everything that this evasive Spearman style build does want. So let's take a peep here at the stats and with the Ring of the Wind, we are now at a agility of 115 at the low level of one and we are now ready to take the world and Vardenfell by storm. We have no excuse now to be missing our thrust with this spear. I mean, this is ridiculous for level one. Like, what, a, what an insane build. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. You have a great set of medium armor to start off with. You have an incredible starter weapon if you don't want to hit in-game loot there with the devil spear. You have the the glass halberd if you want something to enchant and keep that way nice and low for an in-game weapon and we also have an incredible artifact that synergizes great with the build in the ring of the wind so now all that's left is for you to go and create your next spearman character get out there folks stick with the pointy end and i will catch you on the next one